Putin is an evil man, and he is intent on evil deeds. Senator John McCain Putin was a KGB agent. By definition, he doesn't have a soul. If this sounds familiar, it's what Hitler did back in the 1930s. 2016 Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton the specter of an evil-doing Vladimir Putin has loomed over and undermined U.S. thinking about Russia for at least a decade. Inescapably, it is therefore a theme that runs through this audiobook. Henry Kissinger deserves credit for having warned, perhaps alone among prominent American political figures, against this badly distorted image of Russia's leader since 2000. The demonization of Vladimir Putin is not a policy. It is an alibi for not having one. But Kissinger was also wrong. Washington has made many policies strongly influenced by the demonizing of Putin, a personal vilification far exceeding any ever applied to Soviet Russia's latter-day communist leaders. Those policies spread from growing complaints in the early 2000s to U.S.-Russian proxy wars in Georgia, Ukraine, Syria, and eventually even at home in Russiagate allegations. Indeed, policymakers adopted an earlier formulation by the late Senator John McCain as an integral part of a new and more dangerous Cold War. Putin is an unreconstructed Russian imperialist and KGB apparatchik. His world is a brutish, cynical place. We must prevent the darkness of Mr. Putin's world from befalling more of humanity. Mainstream media outlets have played a major prosecutorial role in the demonization. Far from atypically, the Washington Post's editorial page editor wrote, Putin likes to make the bodies bounce. The rule by fear is Soviet, but this time there is no ideology, only a noxious mixture of personal aggrandizement, xenophobia, homophobia, and primitive anti-Americanism. Esteemed publications and writers now routinely degrade themselves by competing to denigrate the flabbily muscled form of the small gray ghoul named Vladimir Putin. There are hundreds of such examples, if not more, over many years. Vilifying Russia's leader has become a canon in the orthodox U.S. narrative of the new Cold War. As with all institutions, the demonization of Putin has its own history. When he first appeared on the world scene as Boris Yeltsin's anointed successor in 1999 through 2000, Putin was welcomed by leading representatives of the U.S. political media establishment. The New York Times chief Moscow correspondent and other verifiers reported that Russia's new leader had an emotional commitment to building a strong democracy. Two years later, President George W. Bush lauded his summit with Putin and the beginning of a very constructive relationship. But the Putin-friendly narrative soon gave away to unrelenting Putin bashing. In 2004, Times columnist Nicholas Kristof inadvertently explained why, at least partially. Kristof complained bitterly of having been suckered by Mr. Putin. He is not a sober version of Boris Yeltsin. By 2006, a Wall Street Journal editor, expressing the establishment's revised opinion, declared it, Time we start thinking of Vladimir Putin's Russia as an enemy of the United States. The rest, as they say, is history. Who has Putin really been during his many years in power? We may have to leave this large, complex question to future historians. When materials for full biographical study, memoirs, archive documents, and others are available, even so, it may surprise listeners to know that Russia's own historians, policy intellectuals, and journalists already argue publicly and differ considerably as to the pluses and minuses of Putin's leadership. My own evaluation is somewhere in the middle. Putin is an evil man, and he is intent on evil deeds. Senator John McCain Putin was a KGB agent. By definition, he doesn't have a soul. If this sounds familiar, it's what Hitler did back in the 1930s. 2016 Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton The specter of an evil-doing Vladimir Putin has loomed over and undermined U.S. thinking about Russia for at least a decade. Inescapably, 
It is therefore a theme that runs through this audiobook. Henry Kissinger deserves credit for having warned, perhaps alone among prominent American political figures, against this badly distorted image of...